All right, so we're going to look at circular motion. And before we do so, we need to define some terms um, so we can play with it. And the first one is angular velocity. I and mean, what we've been dealing with so far has been linear velocity, meters per second, and, and so on. So if you've got a circle, let's call the center O, radius R, standard sort of thing, then the point is moving around the circle circular motion. So we're moving from A to P, but when it does that, it sweeps out an angle at the centre. That angle, let's call it theta. Okay. So angular velocity is not the rate of change of the linear measurement. So we're not talking about how far it's moved along the arc. It's how the angle's changing. That's, well, angular velocity. So omega we often use for the symbol for angular velocity. So it's the rate of change of theta, the angle at the center of the circle, with respect to time. And as we've seen, when we're dealing with calculus and angles, it's radians is the standard unit that we use. So the standard measurement for angular velocity is radians per, well, time unit. Usually it's seconds we're dealing with in this motion sort of stuff. So the theta to t, or using the dot notation, which we use with motion, theta with a, a dot. So how do we connect the two? Linear velocity, which is also sometimes called tangential velocity. The way we can think of it is, and this is why it's sometimes called tangential velocity, you've got the particle moving around in the circle. If you wanted to know at a particular instant what its linear velocity was, it's sort of like imagining you cut the string and the, the particle would fly off at a tangent to the circle. So that's, I guess, how it gets its name, tangential velocity. So it's going to go off in that direction. Okay. So the distance that it's travelled from A to P, I'm going to call that X for linear displacement. We know X is equal to R times theta. We've got it straight away now. Because all I've got to do is differentiate both sides with respect to time. R is a constant. So dx to T, the linear velocity, must be R times the theta to T. Or R times omega, if you want to use that notation. Or simply, velocity is R omega. That's where it comes from. So it's basically our length of an arc formula, but we've just differentiated it with respect to time. So it's become velocity equals, well, linear velocity is equal to the radius times angular velocity. So period, 2 pi on omega. So that's the time it takes for one complete revolution. Satellite moving around 20 revolutions per day our satellite does so let's just simply work out the angular velocity well 20 revolutions per day we want radians per second so just a matter of multiplying out uh, so radians would be a revolution times 2 pi but that's per day so divided by 24 60 60 gives me per second so pi on 2160 radians per second but the question is, how fast is this satellite actually going? It's, it's quite amazing, because the radius, we say, is, well, it's about 9,000 kilometres, the uh, satellites that are in, in orbit. So how fast are they actually moving? Well, when you now multiply that by 9,000, the radius, it's, uh, it's incredibly quick. 15,000 pi kilometres per hour, that thing's moving at. It has to be all correct to the students. 